Okay, thank you. I set myself a challenge today. Um, this is self-timed uh, presentation in the Peter Kucha style, uh, if that's how you pronounce it. So uh, wish, wish me luck. What I'm doing today, my name's Keith Pond, Loughborough University. I'm a senior lecturer there. And seven-minute lightning talk on using, making and using video case studies in higher education. There's a picture of us on, on location there. Um, and it's video case studies, so very much multimedia use of case studies. And over a couple of years, some time ago, we made two video case studies with the intention that we use them in class and, and research them. My background was that I thought I knew quite a lot about teaching and students, 30 years in that game, but my passion was I spent at least 50 years behind the lens. Universities used to look like this in medieval times, um, and some haven't changed a lot since then. Although one of the changes that, that many might, and lecture capture might be a reason for it, is, is this. Despite students paying for their education, they're not taking full advantage of it by being there. According to Price, though, today's YouTube generation want the five R's, if you're familiar with that. Research-based method, relevance, rationale, relaxed, flexible way of, of learning and rapport. They want it involved, engaged with other students. The problem is, and, and these are HESA statistics, show that the average age of the, the academic ain't YouTube. Um, Oxford actually does very, very well on this, um, as does Manchester, the red line. But we know where Oxford dons go when they get older. Wolverhampton, that's the yellow line. <laughs> The context in which the cases were written is small business lending by banks, so credit appraisal, practical, applied, and importantly for case study work using risk and uncertainty. Um, so that there's no one re uh, right answer. And these are all the ingredients for the five R's, research needed. And the research sort of case study we use is the iceberg case study. The iceberg lots below the surface. So you told a story about a business and there's lots to discover underneath. Uh, here's the, uh, a written case study that was developed using the classical story style. Descriptive, sets up the problem, outlines the impending crisis and suggests various futures but doesn't actually give um, an answer, an ending. Um, additional data is given on the VLE such as accounts and, and background information that the case study itself tells that story. And to convert the paper case study into a video, we needed, of course, to start with a storyboard. We devised one of those and introduced a protagonist, the, the, the central character, who is a graduate banker, like our students going in for the first time, wet behind the ears, looking at different businesses and doing some asides to um, the, the camera. Then, the business was getting a location. This was a farming video we made, getting some, a location, hiring some actors, briefing the film crew, and rehearsing in a pub. Lots of cows about, lots of lovely, and Sandra was with me, Sandra was taking pictures today on, on that day, um, using our screenplay, which really sort of took the description from the case study and made it into pictures and dialogue. That's what a screenplay is. The screenplay spawned a shot sequence so that we could film, remarkably, we filmed it in one day, and that was a financial limit. And here's some of what we captured. Also gives me a breather. We used this video case, once we got it in the can, over three years in two different ways. Firstly, as a case study in class where the students <coughs> followed me as the lecturer and then as group coursework. Then a second phase, we used it in class and workshops. We were forced by the university to do an exam in those particular years. But the video was about engaging students. And so the farming analogies here, we wanted students to be kids, fully engaged. 
engaged in the farmer's breakfast and not chicken. They were just involved. <laughs> in class, in the workshops, we use the cases to tell the story and then by using a mixture of role play, short group presentation, discussion, looking and rehearsing at lots of different endings. Um, and the endings were, would the bank lend money or not, or what would, how much would it lend, and those, those sort of things. No completely right answer, no wrong answers. We wanted to research the activities of students doing this as far as they could be observed. So there's VLE data, some survey from the students, formal feedback that the university um, uh, monitored, really to sort of triangulate and find out what was going on. We didn't know. It was a... It was a that hold to us. Um, one interesting finding though was although students work in groups, reporting to working groups, they watched as individuals. That point I know has already been made this morning. One surprising finding, surprising for me anyway, I'm in bed then, 30% of the time they're watching it between midnight and 6 a.m. Um, you know, obviously the, the Netflix uh, bug has got to them there. But something familiar to lecture capture researchers is this one. The time that they, they watched or when they watched the videos was absolutely right up to the deadline. Um, and that ramped up, even though the videos were available for all of that time span um, on there. So what? Our research concluded that you add millennial students to video cases and you get you get kids, you get engaged students, it did engage them more. I've not shared a huge amount of that detail with you, but it did engage them more, and my goodness, we had an enormous amount of fun doing it. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>